Hello, I'm Sister Vasa, and I'm having my coffee here in Vienna, in Austria. It is the sixth week of Lent, which means we have almost reached the very end of the long fasting period. Please excuse the construction noises you might be hearing during this episode. You see, we're having a room prepared upstairs for our Greek costume designer, Emilios, who, as I mentioned in our last episode, is being released from jail next week. This week begins with the Sunday of St. Mary of Egypt, one of the most beloved saints of the Christian East. And her story is an amazing one, because she was a sex addict who, by the grace of God, recovered from her addiction and became a powerful vessel of the Holy Spirit. This is her story. St. Mary was born in Egypt in the late 5th century, and at age 12 she ran away from home and went to the city of Alexandria, where she began to lead a very promiscuous life on the streets, having sex with anybody who agreed to have sex with her. She was not a prostitute because she took no money for this. And it wasn't because she had money, in fact, she lived in great poverty. But she took no money because this way more people would agree to have sex with her. You see, she was an addict. One day she attached herself to a group of men who were boarding a ship headed for Jerusalem for the feast of the elevation of the cross to venerate the cross. She saw this as an opportunity to have many partners along the way and offered her body as pay for the fare. So on the ship, and also in Jerusalem, Mary seduced many people, and as she told this story later, with great shame, some even against their will. When it came time for the Feast of the Elevation in Jerusalem, she noticed everybody going into the Church of the Resurrection, where the cross was kept. And she also tried to enter the church with a crowd of people, but suddenly some invisible force was blocking her way, so she alone could not enter the church. Every time she tried, she alone was pushed back. Finally, exhausted after many attempts to enter the church, she back, backed away into a corner near the entrance, entrance way and started thinking, why is this happening? And suddenly, she was struck with an overwhelming sense of grief and shame as the thought came to her that it was her way of life that blocked her from entrance into a holy place. She began to weep, and after a while she noticed an icon of the Mother of God near the entrance, and she started praying to the Holy Virgin, saying, please, Mother of God, help me and be my guide, and I will start a new life. Just show me the way. After this, Mary of Egypt was not only able to enter the church and venerate the cross, but she was guided by the Mother of God to first go toward the River Jordan, to go to a church there where she took Holy Communion, and then to cross the River Jordan into the Jordanian desert and to begin an ascetic life. Now, for 17 years, the first 17 years, Mary of Egypt in the desert had to fight the fiercest desires and vivid memories of her sexual experiences. She also missed the taste of wine. She could sometimes hear enticing music that she enjoyed in Alexandria. And all these things, these compulsions that she had to return to her old life would really torment her. And then she would ask for help and she would prostrate herself to the ground many times. And when she did so and asked help, especially of the Mother of God, she would suddenly feel that she was enveloped in light and the compulsions would leave her. Now, after 17 years of this repeated battle, she found complete peace. She was discovered in the desert after she had spent 47 years there by an old monk named Zosima or Zosimas, who had been disturbed by thoughts prior to this that he himself was very accomplished in the ascetic life. And God revealed to him this woman that became like an angel that he actually hadn't accomplished as much as she did because he saw her not only walk on water across the Jordan, 
but it was revealed to him also while she was praying that she was elevated above the ground and she also showed him that she could read his thoughts, she knew his name before he introduced himself, and so on. And despite all this, she had great humility. But we have to cut our story short, unfortunately, because we would like to say a few more words about addiction. I'm addicted to you, hooked on your love, like a powerful drug, I can't get in presents us with a wealth of topics, like the power of repentance, the role of the Mother of God in our lives, but we will talk today about the power of addiction. And by that I mean a clearly defined obsession with one thing, to the point that we are powerless against it, even when it begins to destroy us. In the life of Mary of Egypt, we see that addiction turned out to be a gift. Her journey of addiction and the ensuing battle against it brought her to the knowledge of God and to profound self-knowledge. You could say that for Mary, like for any addict, the path of salvation is simple, although it's not easy. You can compare it to the simple situation of Adam and Eve in paradise. There was just one thing they couldn't touch, the tree of knowledge, and by not touching that one thing, they could have paradise. So, for Mary, her addiction, you could say, was her tree of knowledge, and she gained paradise by taking it on, by the grace of God, and much help from another woman, the blessed among women, the Holy Virgin. So, the story of Mary of Egypt also shows us that we can't battle addiction alone. Today, people don't usually battle addictions in the Jordanian desert, but those who do successfully overcome addictions and many people do overcome addictions, depend on, one, the grace of God, and two, the help of other people in various 12-step programs where recovering addicts, those who are already recovering and accomplished in their recovery, help other less experienced addicts. So if we do suffer from addiction of any kind, we should not hesitate to reach out to God and others who can help us, because the addiction could open doors for us, doors to God and to self-knowledge, as it says in Romans 8.28. We know that all things can work together for good to those who love God. All you need is love. That's it for today, ladies and gentlemen, St. Mary of Egypt. Thank you.